In the last lecture, we introduced the notion of classes, objects, ways in which in Python we can actually create our own special kinds of classes, things that matter to us and the problems we're trying to solve, and then using that idea of an object as a way to make instances with internal data called attributes and methods or procedures specific to those instances of, of, of classes that can be used to manipulate that data. The basic idea was to wrap together data that belongs together as a unit with methods both to access that data, manipulate that data, change that data, giving us this abstraction of a class as a, an entity that we can simply think about and use, and having at the same time the ability to, to make multiple instances of that class, different versions of that class that share the same behaviors. In this lecture, we're going to build on that idea to talk about object-oriented programming in more detail. We're going to look at a couple of extended examples to give you a real sense of this. And in particular, in this lecture, we're interested in using the idea of inheritance. So what does that mean? It says that not only would we like to create a class, but we might want to have a specialization of that class, a subclass of that class, that shares all the properties of the basic class but has particular things that it can do. And as we will see, by being able to abstract out different kinds of classes and relationships between them, we can create very easy code for manipulating those ideas by allowing us to isolate different behaviors within each one of those subclasses. Okay, enough about words. Let's look at an example. And the example we're going to use here is to build an application that organizes information about people. So our basic class is going to be a person, and we'll start off by saying that a person has a name and it has a birthday. And we'd like to be able to do things like get the last name of the person, we'd like to be able to get the age of the person, and we'd also like to be able to take a collection of people and sort them by last name so that we have some idea of who the people are there, creating, if you like, a little index of those people. Let's look at how we might build this class. So, I'm going to import up here, as you can see, something that just brings in a module that lets me get out things like dates and times so I can talk about ages of people. But the basic thing I want to do is start with a person class. And it's going to be something that inherits from the underlying object class that we've already seen in Python. What would I like to have in here? Well, I need to have a way of starting up instances of that person class. I assume that a person has a name. So my init method here will create a person called name. And it does things I'd expect. It's going to create a binding in the instance of name to whatever that person's name is. It's going to set birthday for that instance initially to none. And then I'm going to create out something that gets me the last name, and I'm going to bind that away. If I can store that away in last name, then it also says I can get the last name of the person by simply retrieving that. And I'll be able to have, when I print an object, have it just print out the person's name by returning self.name. Okay, let's look at an example of this just to see what, what would happen here. So I'm going to go over to my computer, and I'm going to load up a version of this file, and let me create some people. So let me start by creating a version of myself. And I happen to type it in upper and lowercase things, but that's fine. I've created an instance of myself. Me. Now, if I look at me, it says it's a person object. That's good. If I say what's the printed value of me, it gives me back my name, which is what we expected because it said the string method for a person just returns self.name. Okay, what else can I have here though? Well, I've got this funky thing in the middle here that is going to create the last name by using name.split right there. And let's look at an example of that. So let me create a little list. Just for example, I'm going to make a list which is William Eric Grimson. So it's, sorry, it's a, a string, which is what I wanted to create. And now, let's see what happens if I do a split on that. So I'm taking the string foo, and I'm calling split on it, and I'm basically saying take that string and split it everywhere I find this substring, which is just the space. And if I do that, I now get out a list of three elements, William, Eric, and Grimson, because I've split that string into pieces. Having done that, I could now then get out, for example, the last part. So I'm going to do foo of split, and let me index the last element of that list. Ah, and there's Grimson. So if I go back over to my code here, you can now see how getting the last name out works. I take the name, which is this complete collection, I split it using the spaces and pull out the last name. Okay, simple thing to do, just a little bit of extra hacking. 
Now, what else might I like inside of uh, a class? Well, I want to be able to set the birthday. And so I'm going to take in a month, day, and a year. And I'm going to set birthday to be a method from date time that gets me out the uh, date, in, uh, if you'll, as you'll see in a second, uh, uh, for those particular pieces. And that then lets me get the age of a person by comparing today to my birthday and returning it in days. Let's take a look at what that might do. So I'm going to set my birthday here. So I'm back over to me and I want to set the birthday. And I'm going to set it. And again, the method is it's the month. So there we go. And that's now set it. If I wanted to go look at it, I shouldn't really do this. I'm kind of breaking um, the uh, uh, abstraction barrier here. But I can look at me's birthday. And it says, okay, it's a date of that year, that day, and that month. What I can really do, though, is I can say, so how old am I? And it says, I'm that. Whoa, well, what's that? Remember, that's returning it in days. So if I wanted to see my age, I could uh, divide that by 365. And I see that I'm almost 87 years old. All right, I made up a birthday. I'm not quite that ancient yet. Now, nice thing about this is, I've created a little object. I can get pieces out of it. Let's create another object. I'm going to create uh, an object which is a person. This is a famous person, a little old. Singer. Share. Notice because she only has one name, I can certainly still, or I ought to be able to still get the right thing. And if I get her last name, it returns it, which is great. Okay. Now, having done that, suppose I wanted to, in fact, create a list of people and sort them alphabetically. All right? So I'm going to make a little list here, and that'll be the list of me and her. I can print it out. It's a couple of objects, which sounds fine. And now, uh, let me do the following. 4P in P list. Let's print the people. And when I do it, I get me and I get share. Okay, but if I had a really long list, I'd like to have them actually sorted in order. So, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say, for P list, I'm going to sort it. Okay. And it's now going to give me back something, so that if I, in fact, look at what I had previously, which is to print all the elements of P list, it's now in alphabetical order. Okay, so wait a minute. What's that sort thing doing? I said, I got a list and I'm sorting it. And it kind of did what I'd like it to do, but how does it actually do that? Well, here's how plist.sort as a method call works. Python uses a particular algorithm called TimSort for sorting sequences. And we've seen some other sorting algorithm. This turns out to be a very highly optimized combination of a merge sort and an insertion sort that has really good average case behavior. If you want to look it up, it's worth checking it out. It's a kind of a neat algorithm. But basically what it does is it's going to sort things very efficiently. What it needs to know, what Python needs to know about the objects being sorted is what's the result of a less than comparison between two objects. And we put less than here because we want this to be generic. And in fact, when we think about objects, how might we like to sort them? Well, that's up to us to define. And in particular, just to look at a little bit of details, the Python interpreter translates a less than comparison of two objects into a method call. In other words, a method call on object one. It takes the first object, object one, it gets its less than method, and then calls that on object two. That's nice, because then, in order to enable sort operations on instances of a class, I just need to implement my particular version of a less than special method. Okay? And I can do that. And here it is. Here's my less than. I'm going to set up something that's going to return true if self's name is lexicographically, and that's just a long-winded way of saying, in terms of alphabetical sorting, if it's less than the other's name and falls otherwise. So how do I do it? Well, I first check my last name against the other person's last name. If they're the same, then I'll want to check first names. And I'll simply use a comparison right there of first names. And that's nice, because what it simply says is, uh, remember, a name is now a string with first names at the beginning. It's going to do the standard comparison of strings. If the last names are not the same, then I'll sort based on the last name, again using a string comparison. And everything else remains exactly as the same, and that's exactly why my sort algorithm did the piece that I had. 
Okay, so we've shown an example of building a class. In the next segment, we're going to look at some more interesting ways of building on top of that class.